How many different audio scenarios can you find for a portable digital recorder? You could be recording a podcast, natural ambiences, or perhaps a lecture. You may be out in the field recording rain on the roof or crickets in the grass. Maybe you're at a live gig to capture the music, or your band is recording a demo and you need the best sound quality possible. Perhaps you're filming and want the audio to be as great as the visuals. The possibilities for recording are endless, so when choosing a portable recorder, your first consideration needs to be, what am I going to use it for? This article focuses on two portable recorders, the Zoom H4n Pro and the Sony PCMD100. It examines and compares the best and worst features of each recorder to help you answer the all-important question, which recorder should I buy? Both the Sony PCMD100 and the Zoom H4M Pro recorders come with built-in microphones, which makes it easy to record ambiences, voices and music without the need for extra microphones and cables. This is very handy if you want to work with a minimum of equipment. The XY mics make it easy to record in stereo, with the microphones angling at either 90 degrees or 120. Of the two recorders, the mics on the PCMD100 are higher quality and excellently suited to record sound effects, quiet natural ambiences, live events, acoustic instruments, and pretty much everything else. On the other hand, Zoom's H4M Pro includes two XLR inputs right at the bottom of the recorder. This feature makes the Pro a better fit for recording podcasts and one-on-one -on -one interviews, where you need each person to speak into a separate microphone. You could technically jerry-rig a setup and plug it into the D100's 3.5mm input, but that is far too complicated for most people's use cases. For gain control, you have to use the two buttons on the side of the H4M Pro to set or change the levels. It can be awkward to manage, personally, I prefer the small wheel on the PCMD100. The white writing contrasts sharply with the black wheel, which allows you to see the numbers more clearly in dimly lit surroundings. Sony has also included a latch for added protection. You lift it, set your level, and then close it down, thus eliminating the possibility of accidentally changing levels. When it comes to self-noise, the H4M Pro isn't the best recorder on the market. It is perfectly fine to record louder sounds such as voiceovers, lively dialogue or sound effects, loud music, etc. On the other hand, it is challenging to record quiet ambiences on the Zoom H4M Pro because there will be quite a bit of hiss when you increase the volume. The high quality preamps and built-in microphones of the Sony PCMD100 make it ideal for recording a whole range of sounds with a minimum amount of fuss. Even if the sounds are quiet, you'll be able to capture them far more clearly than with the H4M Pro. This isn't really unique to the H4M Pro or even the Zoom H series. No handheld recorder can really match up with the Sony PCMD100 in this regard, which is why it's so pricey to buy now that it's been discontinued. Another important difference between the two recorders is the maximum sample rate. The Zoom H4M Pro can record at a maximum 96kHz by 24-bit. The PCMD100, on the other hand, can record to a maximum of 192kHz by 24-bit. Whilst this will be incredibly useful for sound designers and sound effects recordists, it will make no difference for people who just want to record their voice or make non-experimental music. The only benefit for 192kHz over 96kHz is that you will be able to stretch and manipulate the audio far more, which is useful in niche use cases. Think of it like frames per second in video. Regular people will need to go beyond 60 FPS, so 240 FPS won't add any value for them. By the way, if you're finding this video to be helpful, don't forget to leave a like, as it'll help with the algorithm, and other people will be able to find this video as well. And now, back to the video. Portability is vital with these handheld recorders. They are both small and light, with the zoom weighing in at only 10.6 ounces, or 280 grams, while the Sony is slightly heavier at 13.9 ounces, or 390 grams. Because you'll be carrying a recorder into many different situations, you want to make sure it can stand up to the rigor of travel bags and outdoor locations. Both the PCMD100 and the H4M Pro deliver, being sturdy and durable. 
they also come with handy cases for extra protection. The Zoom H4M Pro comes with a plastic case which will at least protect the device from scratches and scuff marks. The PCMD100 comes with a handy pouch, which also allows you to carry accessories at the same time. While I will always encourage you to take great care with your recorder, it's good to know that both devices are built to last. One thing that's important for me when recording is knowing that I have enough power and that I won't run out halfway for an important recording session. The BCMD100 requires four AA batteries, which will last for up to 12 hours. Bear in mind that there are many variables which can affect the battery life of these devices. Even the make of the batteries can make a difference. The battery case is kept in place with a sliding lock, so you can guarantee that you won't accidentally kill the power during recording. By contrast, the H4M Pro uses only two AA batteries, which last up to six hours, again depending on how and what you're recording. Whichever recorder you choose, it is wise to have a stash of spare batteries in your kit. That way you're covered no matter how long your recording trip lasts. When it comes to storing your data, each recorder will accept SD cards with up to 32GB of storage, and indeed the Sony can take a 64GB card. That's ample storage space, but the PCMD100 goes only one step further and provides internal storage as well. It works seamlessly with the SD card too, so that if you run out of internal storage, it immediately begins to use the card or vice versa. It can be disappointing to listen back to hours of recording, only to realize that there is wind noise you weren't aware of at the time. That is why it is essential to have wind protection for your microphones. The Zoom H4M Pro has no wind protection provided, so a windshield is something that you absolutely need to buy separately if you're going to record outdoors. I always recommend this right coat set, which includes an effective windshield, grip and shock mount. By contrast, Sony does include a windshield in its kit, which is a bonus that sets it apart from many other recorders. The windshield is actually really good quality, and it's comparable to the right coat one. That being said, it's still worth investing in right coat's kit for the added shock absorption factor. So, let us return to the question I asked at the start. How are you planning to use your portable recorder? If you need a handheld portable recorder which records high quality audio with a minimum of fuss, then the more expensive Sony PCMD100 will probably suit you well. This is an especially good choice if you plan on recording super quiet stuff like natural ambiences or ASMR. It will record effortlessly in many scenarios, including both loud and quiet ambiences, and the internal-external storage combination gives you complete confidence to know that you're unlikely to run out of storage space. When it comes to the H4M Pro, it's fair to say that it is a lot cheaper and can take external microphones but doesn't have the sound quality of the Sony. That probably makes it a better buy if you're planning on using external microphones, such as in the case of a podcast, interviews, etc. I hope this comparison between the Sony PCMD100 and the Zoom H4M Pro helps you to decide which is the recorder for you. With that in mind, if you are still undecided or you would like to know more, I've included a link down below to more of my handheld recording device reviews. Do you have any questions? Don't forget to leave them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you'd like to have a look at any of the products mentioned in this video, or you would like to know how much they cost in your country, you can find affiliate links down below. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and hit that bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.